Right. Hey everyone, my name is Kevin Gaston. I'm with Tree People. Uh, we are here at the Coal Creek High Trail going to discuss today uh, the various ecosystems and how they might react to fire in Southern California. Uh, so here in Southern California, we have a very different fire regime. Uh, we have very chaparral and sage scrub dominated slopes. Uh, we don't have coniferous forests, at least not in great abundance. Uh, coniferous forests are pine trees, things that you often associate with the high Sierras or the Rocky Mountains. This is a point that we really want to drive home, uh, is that fire behaves very differently in chaparral than it does in uh, true forests uh, with coniferous pines. A lot of people have different expectations in terms of prescribed fires, different fuels treatment. Um, and it really is a very different system. So the differences in management uh, are profound and will have profound impacts uh, for how the fire behaves and how the community is protected. Uh, so we're at the trailhead for the Cold Creek High Trail. This is at mile marker 2.06 uh, for Stunt Road. And this is one of the best examples I've seen of where you can really see the three most dominant vegetation types in the San Monica Mountains. So on the far left here, we have chaparral. This is your very classic California landscape. Uh, this is evergreen shrubs, closed canopy, very dense woody vegetation. In the middle, we have grassland. Uh, this owes itself to a previous driveway, so grasses oftentimes follow disturbance. And then on the far right, we have coastal sage scrub. So this is deciduous. It loses its leaves during the fall season. Uh, open canopy um, and also very prone to type conversion. All right, so behind me is a really good example of chaparral type ecosystem. Uh, so right here we have scrub oak, uh, but there's also a mix of chamise and ceanothus, uh, very thick, dense. You can see behind me, if you were here as a fireman or even just a hiker, uh, trying to get through this brush is extremely difficult. It really sort of defines the San Monica Mountains and much of Southern California. These adapt to drought through something called a sclerophyllous leaf type. Uh, so they have a thick leaves, really dense oil, which makes them highly flammable. But at the same time, because of their thick woody stalks, they retain moisture much better than a grassland would. Um, so we actually are very fortunate here in Cold Creek Valley, the county does monthly monitoring of what's called live fuel moisture. They'll take a snip of chamise, compare its weight to the weight once it's dried, and depending on that ratio, they can determine what's the amount of moisture within that live fuel. So the critical threshold is often referred to at 60%. Uh, as of a month ago, we are about 70%. Uh, so by the time October rolls around, uh, we're likely going to be into that critical fire condition. All right, so unfortunately, the fabled Golden Hills of California are largely the result of a European invader, uh, and that's namely annual grasses. So things like bromes and wild oats. Uh, these are grasses that came from Europe, uh, spread through cattle ranching and other means, um, and really have taken over much of California's ecosystem. Uh, what that results in is this is highly flammable, easily ignited fuel. Uh, the majority of our fires are just going to start accidentally uh, by human intervention. So be it a chain uh, dragging on a road uh, or just simply a backfiring car, oftentimes it will ignite the grass um, which leads to these catastrophic events. Now grasses sometimes are referred to as one hour fuel, meaning that their internal moisture matches the atmosphere's moisture in just an hour. So when these harsh, dry Santa Ana winds come through, if we have a 5% humidity day, these grasses will mimic that, which makes them so dangerous. Now these grasses spread fire much quicker than other ecosystem types. Uh, it's true that chaparral will burn with a higher intensity and a higher heat, uh, but when it comes to protecting life and property, oftentimes the biggest thing is time. Uh, just having the ability to see the fire coming, evacuate, and get uh, protection in there to protect the structures. The problem is with grass fires that move so quick during high speed Santa Ana events, we may not have time as a com community to react to that. Good to go? Yep. All right, so this is Wild Oak, and we are filming this towards the end of September, and you can just see this is dry and brittle and ready to burn. Uh, very susceptible even to the small spark. Uh, so while it is the easiest ecosystem for firemen to operate in, um, it is also one of the most dangerous. Uh, during high wind events, a fire can spark up behind them, 
Um, they have very little time uh, to react. All right, so I am literally surrounded by a coastal sage scrub. Uh, this is another very classic California ecosystem type. Um, and we have some really good, just classic candidates here. We've got California buckwheat, sagebrush, and then purple sage as well. Uh, now what you'll notice is this isn't the prettiest ecosystem right now. Uh, this time of year, they get dormant because of the drought. Uh, rather than holding on to moisture like chaparral, they simply lie low for a little bit. Don't expend so much of their energy uh, until the winter rains come. Uh, so this can be a little bit of a challenge as well. This is much drier than chaparral, not quite so much as uh, the grasses. So it's an intermediate type in terms of fire behavior. So for coastal sage, uh, you often don't see the closed canopy like you do with chaparral, much more open, a little spotty between the main shrubs. Um, and in between you find the flowers, grasses, uh, both native and non-native between them. So coastal sage scrub is also prone to type conversion due to fire frequency, not to the same magnitude that chaparral is, uh, but the largest threat to so coastal sage scrub is development itself. A lot of the coastal bluffs of Malibu uh, that are so envious for uh, development uh, are the prime location for sage scrub. What puts the balance of all these ecosystems at risk is type conversion. As we continue to have more and more frequent fires in Southern California, we're losing chaparral and sage scrub and it's being replaced by grassland. Every time a fire burns through wildlands, portions of that wildland will convert to grassland and likely never come back. Uh, now, if you live in one of these interface communities, you really need to learn the difference between chaparral, grassland, and how that might affect the fire if it comes to your doorstep. Talk to your community members, talk to the fire department, and really learn the situation that you're in so you can be fully prepared when the fire comes through. All right, so today we've covered a bit of the ecology of wildfire in Southern California. If you want to learn more about what you can do to defend your home, go to defensiblespace.org. There you can find resources on architectural changes, landscape modification that you can utilize to protect your home.